Um, I find I find getting out of bed a little early sometimes a challenge on Sunday morning, so I understand why it's it's uh, customary to uh, find it more convenient to sign up for the 11 than sign up for the 9 o'clock. But we're glad you're here, and uh, we've gone live this morning, so anything and everything you do is live on Facebook, and we're trusting that it's all going to work technologically well. We do not have our overhead projector functioning yet. We discovered this week that we have a cable problem, and just as usual, it was supposed to be delivered a new one on Friday, and guess what? It's coming on Monday. So we will be doing some audio worship this morning as we did last week, but we're working through the little kinks in the system, and uh, it's just great to be back in the same building together. And I want to uh, open in prayer, but before I do that, I do want to extend a special welcome to Pastor Dave and Elsie that are with us this morning. He'll be sharing from the Word, and I'll say a little bit more about that a little bit later. And uh, anyone else visiting with us, appreciate having you here. And uh, let's just worship the Lord together and bow in prayer and ask for his blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege we have and the freedom we have to worship together. Father, we thank you for the joy that we have in knowing Christ as Lord and Savior. And Father, we pray that you would bless our time as we fellowship together. Father, we pray that you would bless your word. And we ask, Father, that as we are here together today, that we would honor and glorify your name and that you would be lifted high. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one here, and we pray for those that could not come. For whatever that reason be, Father, we pray that you would be with them where they are and bless them as you bless us. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to share, not only in this auditorium, but across the electronic and technical world to others outside. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go further, let me just uh, give you a few quick announcements. Um, obviously, as I've already commented, you do need to continue to sign up for Sunday mornings, whether it is the 9 o'clock or the 11 o'clock service. We encourage you to do that because it helps in the planning and... Uh, ranging of chairs and all of the other things involved around us being able to be together uh, on Sunday morning. As far as tonight, youth, Aaron has youth ignite at 6 o'clock. So please don't forget that uh, the youth are getting together at 6 o'clock this evening. In relationship to upcoming ministries, Freedom Sessions... The start date has been delayed, but Freedom Sessions is not cancelled. It's simply delayed. If you're interested in Freedom Sessions, please get in contact with Candace. Uh, she had an unexpected call for surgery this week that was not expected. And so she is recovering from a surgery ankle replacement and has had to delay it. And I'm not just sure what the date will be, but Agne um, Candace has all the details. So if you're interested, please get in contact with her so there's still opportunity to sign up for Freedom Sessions. And ministry team leaders, we are going to be having a meeting in the very near future. We've not forgotten about you. And as we get uh, further into our fall and the planning, early in October, I'm going to be sending out an email from staff and so forth. And we will be having a ministry team leaders meeting and uh, trying to find an evening where we can have the majority of our ministry team leaders together. Early October, life groups. We have chosen a study for life groups. It's this little book. I love it because it's small. I'm not an avid reader. There's only 62 pages in it, and it lasts for 11 weeks. So imagine how many pages you have to read each week. Not very many. And uh, the study is very light, and we've intentionally chosen it for that reason. 
It's good material, but it's not going to have you theologically struggling, at least I hope not. It says, less fret, more faith. So if the study creates fret, we're in trouble. It's supposed to increase your faith. And uh, we are restructuring our life groups a little bit to try and uh, have a little bit uh, more uh, accommodating to AHS rules and guidelines, about 10 per group. And uh, we will be send, uh, sending out and making available sign up for life groups and uh, getting that organized in the next week, week and a half. So please be aware of that. Please pay attention to uh, what's coming your way and, and get signed up for one of the life groups. And we do have a few more leaders this year. So the life group numbers will be up as far as the number of groups and uh, different nights of the week. So you'll be able to choose uh, what evening in the week uh, suits you the best. But I do encourage you, it's a good uh, Max Lucado uh, based study and fits well in our uh, pandemic time. Less fret, more faith. So I want to encourage you to, uh, to sign up for that. I don't believe we have anything else that I need to mention right now. I have a bulletin that is printed on two pages upside down. But our world is upright. So let's worship together by just listening, tuning in your ears, close your eyes maybe, listen to the words of these next uh, two songs, and, uh, and then I'll come back and we'll have opportunity to uh, introduce Pastor Dave and share a little bit uh, concerning who we have the joy of listening to and sharing in God's word. the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I will worship Your holy name, the sun Holy 
to come and share the word. I do want to uh, give you a little bit of an update on Mike and Wendy. Um, they are both doing well. Um, Mike was out golfing this week, so that says something. I understand he had not been golfing for about two years, and uh, I didn't hear the results, <laughs> but he was with my son-in-law, with Brian, and Brian's comment was, it took a while to get around nine holes. <laughs> I had warned Brian before he went to make sure they took a lot of extra golf balls. And I'm not sure what they came back with. But just to know that uh, they were out there and uh, Mike was enjoying some relaxation. Uh, they're coming along well. They're getting some assistance from those that can provide some help in the area of uh, his recovery and uh, his uh, strengthening in both his mental, emotional health and so forth. And uh, they are monitoring well and keeping in touch with us uh, that are on the board and so forth. And we are looking forward to having them back, but we still don't know the time frame. So we just want you to sort of be aware of that. I also do want to take a moment and pray as we invite Pastor Dave to come uh, for Candace and, um, and others for, uh, that uh, are not uh, able to be with us just simply because of circumstances and health reasons. Um, I understand that uh, there is a lot to also praise the Lord for. I've heard uh, a few little comments here and there that uh, harvest this year has been adequate or abundant uh, above and beyond what uh, would be expected and so we have to praise the Lord for that and we just have to be very thankful for each and every one of you that are here healthy and uh, so let's just bow our heads in prayer and uh, ask the Lord's blessing on his word and also on these that uh, can't be with us this morning. Father we thank you that as we come to you we come to the one who is the comforter, the great physician, the one who is in sovereign control of all things. And so, Father, this morning as we think of Candace and her situation and her recovery from surgery, we ask, Lord, that you'd have your hand upon her. Father, we pray that uh, you would bless her and Scott, and uh, Father, just uh, give her a quick 
uh, reestablishing of her health and her strength and uh, Father pain control and all of these things that are involved. Father, may she know your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the many areas of ministry that she participates in in our midst. And Father, we lift her up to you as a brother and sister in Christ. As a couple, we ask, Father, for your blessing upon them. Father, we pray, too, that you would continue to guide and direct in Mike and Wendy's uh, health and strength and the professionals that work with them. Father, we thank you for them as a church family. We are blessed. And Father, as the shepherd of our flock, we ask for him that you would touch his heart and his life in these days in a very, very special way. And we lift him up to you today and we ask for your blessing, knowing, Father, that your hand is upon him as one chosen to minister and serve in our midst. And Father, this morning, too, we want to pray for Pastor Dave, as he comes to share from your word, thank you, Lord, for him and for the ministry that you've given to him over many years. And thank you, Lord, for his willingness to share and to participate in ministry with us in these days. And we thank you, Lord, for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Dave has been recently pastoring in the Crossfield area. That's where Dave and Elsie live. And uh, he finished up ministry at Crossfield, our Fellowship Baptist Church in Crossfield, at the end of May. And is sort of in a transition, looking for how the Lord's going to lead him into ministry. He has a hair color that suggests it could have something to do with retirement, or an aspect of retirement. But then again, I've known Dave for a little while, and I think that hair color's been there for a while, Dave. Is that not right? It used to be dark red. Oh, well, that tells us something about a redhead, right? Okay, no, Dave is uh, right now in transition. Elsie, you're in the field of education, right? And uh, so please feel free to interact with them after the service. And uh, if you happen to, on one of the Sundays that they're going to be with us, want to invite them out for some hospitality after the service, uh, feel free to do that. They're, uh, I think, quite open to that if they don't have another commitment and uh, they would enjoy some uh, fellowship with you. The way we have this scheduled as a board is that uh, Dave will be speaking and uh, for a couple of weeks now, this Sunday and next Sunday, and then Aaron will be back with us, and then Dave will be back with us, and it'll be an interchange over the next uh, six to eight weeks. And uh, so Aaron will be finishing up his series, and Dave will, is starting a series this morning on the Lord's Prayer and uh, looking forward to that. So uh, you will be tracking with that uh, through these coming weeks, a little bit of a back and forth, but uh, it's, it's just a joy to have Dave here. He's a man of God's word. He loves to teach and preach, and uh, he'll share a little bit about uh, his own personal journey uh, as he uh, comes to us and shares from the word. Dave, come and share with us uh, what God has put on your heart. Thanks, Norm. Uh, you can take your Bibles if you want to. We're only looking at one and a half verses this morning, so you might not even need to look in your Bibles, but Luke chapter 11, verse 1, because I'm assuming you have your New Testament memorized, so you might not need that. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 and 2 where, is where we're going to be, but um, Elsie and I feel very privileged to be invited to help share God's Word. I would do it for nothing uh, wherever I can do it, because I just love to talk about God's Word with other people. And as I met with the um, elders, we batted around some themes and so on, and we eventually settled on uh, the Lord's Prayer. And um, actually, I, if I could only share one thing with a group of people, it would be the Lord's Prayer, because um, aside from becoming a Christian and being made a new creature and getting the new heart that God promises and the Spirit of God indwelling me, aside from understanding the Gospel, the next thing I would like to share with people is to know how to walk and talk with God in a way that's deeply meaningful. And I, uh, I discovered that in the Lord's Prayer. So I'm really glad to share this with you, and I hope it'll transform your life um, as it has mine. Um, I, I came to faith in Jesus uh, very miraculously. You know, sometimes people share a story about how they became Christians. They were drug addicts and, you know, and 
whatever terrible lives, and then they uh, realized they needed God and so on. Well, mine is even more miraculous. I grew up in a church, and I thought I was a Christian, so I wasn't even looking for God. <laughs> and then he found me. You know, I believed with my head what the Bible said. I went to church every week and so on and so forth. And then I found out I wasn't even a Christian. I just believed with my head, not with my heart. So, um, but, so when I became a, a real follower of Jesus at the age of 19, I was gripped with a desire to be a godly person. And I knew that godly people prayed, and they prayed long, and they prayed well, and they walked really closely with God. And I wanted to do that. And so I committed myself to becoming a praying person, and I tried to set aside an hour a day to spend in prayer with God, and I really tried. I tried for 19 years <laughs> to be a really good Christian, you know. I, and uh, finally, I, I was, had been a pastor for a few years, and one morning in my office, I just admitted to myself, finally, I'm just an average Christian, and I have no special ability to pray. And just out of a sense of hopelessness, I thought, I'm just going to go back to what Jesus taught, how to pray 101, and just do exactly what he said, and only what he said, because I no longer trusted myself. And that's how I came into appreciating the Lord's Prayer. And overnight, my prayer life changed. So I want to share that with you. Um, and I want us, first of all, to, um, to be convinced that we have to pray the Lord's Prayer. Um, and so that's what we're going to look, look at first, why we must pray the Lord's Prayer. And I want to give you three reasons for that. And the first reason is that the Lord's Prayer is a needed model of prayer. It's needful. We need it. You need it. I need it. And you see that in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, as a disciple comes to Jesus, and, um, <coughs> excuse me, verse 1 says, now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And I just ask you to picture what's happening here. So Jesus is with his disciples, and he's off to the side, maybe he's praying, and one of them is watching him. And as he's watching him, he is wishing he had the experience Jesus was having. He was wishing he could pray the way Jesus prayed. He felt this sense of need. And this wasn't the first time, by the way, they had watched Jesus pray and seen how it impacted his life. Um, for example, in Luke chapter 6, verse 12, we read, In these days he, Jesus, went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. Now just imagine being with Jesus, and he prays through the whole night. Um, you would be wondering, how, how does anyone pray through the whole night and enjoy it? Like, how does he do that, you know? Because clearly, he's getting a lot out of prayer. And then um, in chapter 9, verse 18 of Luke, we read, Now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And so Jesus prayed, and the disciples saw that this was a really big part of his spirituality. You know, this person who could do miracles, this person who could preach and sway the crowds, somehow it was connected to his whole spirituality and prayer. In fact, sometimes when Jesus prayed, he actually glowed. <laughs> we read about that in chapter 9, verse 28. Now, about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. Can you imagine being in the presence of somebody who's glowing because they're so close to God? And that's what happened with Jesus as he was praying. He got a lot out of prayer, and he wanted that. So that brings us back to chapter 11, verse 1. Lord, teach us to pray. Now, this is really quite a surprising request. And it's surprising because this was a Jewish man. And Jewish men became men at the age of 12. And they were expected, as Jewish men, to pray three times a day. 
So even if this guy was only 22 years old, he had been praying three times a day for 10 years. And I am sure he assumed he knew how to pray. And yet when he watched Jesus, he thought, I don't know how to pray at all. I need a lesson in how to pray. So I want to look at this. We, why do we need the Lord's Prayer? And the first reason is because we pray inadequately. That's what this guy was feeling. He'd been praying all this time, and he just he realized he didn't have what Jesus had. He was inadequate in his prayer life. You know, Jesus was drawn to prayer, and he had to force himself to pray. Jesus was alive when he prayed, and this guy just felt dry even bored sometimes. You know, Jesus prayed at length, and he fell asleep when he tried to pray at length. Um, prayer gave Jesus a sense of joy and strength and gladness, and he just felt drained when he had finished praying. <laughs> there was so, such a difference. And I want you to think about this. This really struck me after a while. Uh, they had observed Jesus doing some other pretty spectacular things, you know. They had watched Jesus doing miracles, like Jesus would go up to a blind person and touch him, and this blind person would see. And everybody around would just be dancing for joy. Or Jesus would touch a lame person, and he'd throw away his crutches, and he'd start walking. Or Jesus was t would touch a leper, and this leper was suddenly, his, his skin was as, as pure as snow. Or Jesus would walk across the water. And these miracles just caused a sensation with the crowds. That's why a lot of them came to see Jesus. He was a miracle worker. But we don't have any record of the disciples saying, Jesus, could you teach us how to do a miracle? They never asked for that. And you know, Jesus was something of a preacher, you know. When he preached, crowds would just stream to hear him. I mean, easily 5,000 people at times would just be hanging on to every word he said. And as the uh, disciples watched him preach, their own hearts would be moved, like just gripped by what Jesus was saying. And they'd look into the audience and every face was staring at Jesus. Some of them were wiping tears from their faces. His sermons were so moving, they changed lives. And yet we never hear of the disciples saying, Jesus, teach us how to preach like you preach. But when it came to prayer, they saw something of what prayer can be that they so wanted to have. And so they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. So we need the Lord's Prayer because it was given by Jesus to solve the problem of inadequacy. So if the Lord's Prayer was Jesus' answer to this problem, then it's probably a good answer. It, it probably answers the problem. It probably solves the problem, right? Jesus was saying, do, do you want to experience prayer the way I do? Do you want to have that sense of joy? Do you want to have answers to prayer? Do you want your heart to get aligned with God's when you pray? Well, if you want what I've got, say this. We need that. Now, we need the Lord's Prayer because we pray inadequately, but we need the Lord's Prayer also because we pray wrongly. <laughs> and, you know, I can just imagine people going, what do you mean praying wrongly? Like, isn't God just happy if we talk to him? Like, isn't that good enough? You know, like, for example, a father, if his, their little three-year-old son comes up and says, Daddy, I want a candy, I want a candy, please give me a candy. Well, the father's just glad that he's come to him. He'll probably give him a candy. Right? Isn't God like that? That he just wants us to come and just babble to him. Just say what's on our mind. Well, take that three-year-old child and add 13 years to his life. And if when he's 16 or 18 or 22, he's still coming to his father and saying, Daddy, could you please give me a candy? Please give me a candy. Would you give me a candy? I want a candy, Daddy. Certainly the father would go, oh, my goodness, you know. I wish he would just grow up a bit. I, and I wish his priorities were a little bit bigger than getting a candy. I wish, I wish there'd be some maturity in our conversation, something more meaningful to talk about. And so we can pray wrongly. We can be very immature in our prayer. 
And the Lord's Prayer is meant to help us to pray right. To start having God's priorities and big ideas. You know, just for one example, if you go through the Lord's Prayer, you'll see that it's got two main divisions. It begins with God and his concerns, and then it moves over to us and our concerns. And when we're immature, we always go to God with our problems first. And God is saying, no, 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 no. Don't start with yourself. You know, don't start with the candy. Start with me. That's immature. Start with me. That's how you start praying. So we'll get into some things like that. So the first reason we should pray through the Lord's Prayer is that it's a needed prayer model. It's needed because we pray inadequately. We don't experience praying the way Jesus did, and we pray wrongly. Now, the second reason we should pray the Lord's Prayer is that it's a commanded prayer model. Have you ever noticed that? When I decided I'm going to just, I just don't trust myself anymore, I'm, I'm just going to do exactly what Jesus said and nothing else, just that, one of the first things I notice is that Luke eleven two says, when you pray, say. And Matthew 6, 9 says, this then is how you should pray. And I thought, those sound like commands. So I took out my Greek grammar, and sure enough, they're both imperatives, and that means the Lord's Prayer is commanded. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Now, what if it was a suggestion? What if, you know, the disciples had come to Jesus and they had said to Jesus, Jesus, could you teach us how to pray? And Jesus had said, well, here's a suggestion. Why don't you say this? I think if Jesus had done that, we should do it, right? Like, if I go to a mechanic, and he tells me how something should be fixed or what I should do about a rattle in my, under my hood, well, since he knows a lot more than I do, I'm probably going to do it because his status with mechanics is way up here compared to mine. Well, if Jesus even made a suggestion about how we should pray, his understanding of prayer is way up here. We should do it. But it wasn't suggested. It was commanded that we pray. So here's the thing that I found very striking. I was 37 years old at the time I started getting into this, and I'd been to Sunday school all my life. I'd been to Christian clubs all my life. I'd listened to sermons all my life. I went to Bible college. Then I went to seminary. I took books on prayer. I went to seminars on prayer. And in all those years, nobody ever once said to me, Dave, if you want to know how to pray, pray the Lord's Prayer. Not once. And that's amazing because it is a commanded prayer model. Now, I tried other models. We all follow some model of praying, and they never work. I want you to just imagine if this was written in your Bibles. Now it came to pass that the disciples saw Jesus praying and said to him, Master, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, you should pray our Father. And he went through the Lord's Prayer. The disciples nodded thoughtfully. Then Peter said, Lord, this is very good, but I would suggest that we follow the acronym ACTS. And when he had explained it, Jesus said, Peter, I hadn't thought of that. Yes, it is very good and much simpler, too. James said, no, I disagree. I'm a practical man, and I prefer to make a prayer list and then just pray through that list. I've been doing it for years. But John, who was super spiritual, said, nay, Lord, as spiritual people, we should just pray as the Spirit prompts us. Jesus looked upon John amazed and said, you are surely ahead of your time, John. And he encouraged them that this was the best wisdom on prayer yet given. Now, can you imagine that happening? <laughs> Obviously not, right? And yet, 
If we don't pray after the model of the Lord's Prayer, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going, oh, I, th- I can see some good principles there. Yeah, I could use some of those points. But basically, I like to just pray what I'm feeling. That's my model. <laughs> we wouldn't do that, and we wouldn't find it in the Bible. But that's what we're doing. So if we're supposed to pray the Lord's Prayer, then how do we do what he's commanded? And I'll just sort of sketch this out quickly, and we'll look at it in the weeks ahead. But the Lord's Prayer is really like a table of contents to a book, right? Each phrase is like a chapter with a theme. So the first theme in the prayer is our Father. So you need to develop a whole paragraph or a whole chapter on that theme. You begin prayer by acknowledging to God that he's your Father and all that that means to you. And how you feel about that. And then in heaven, you're acknowledging to God his sovereignty and his perfections. And you express back to God what you love about who he is. And you'd write a whole chapter on that theme. And so each of these petitions is a theme that is to be part of your book prayer. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that every single time you pray, you include every single theme, but God, if he took all your prayers and they don't reflect these themes, your prayer is incomplete. I'd even go further and say that these themes are in a certain order on purpose. And I realize this, after I've been doing this for a couple of years, I realize that Jesus was brilliant. That, there's <laughs> that there was an order on purpose. And, you know, I think about, for example, a mechanic. If you ask the mechanic, hey, how do I change the oil on my car? He knows his craft so thoroughly that not only would he tell you all the bits that you're supposed to do, he will actually tell you all the bits you're supposed to do in sequential order. You know, he'll say, well, first of all, put on the emergency brake. Then before you jack it up... Loosen the lug nuts, you know, and then jack it up. You know, like he would, because he's so familiar with his craft. And that's what Jesus has done with the Lord's Prayer. There is a logic and a connection in these parts that is just brilliant. Um, Let me just give you an example. We tend, and by the way, if you start praying the Lord's Prayer, you're going to have to take yourself by the scruff of your neck and force yourself not to ask God for anything for the first part of praying. Because <laughs> so there's something in you that just wants to ask God right away for things. But the first part of the Lord's Prayer, you don't ask for anything. You start with our Father. Now, why is that so brilliant? And the answer is this. When you ask for something and you doubt that God loves you, you cannot pray in faith. Why should God give you anything if you don't pray in faith? And so you start by acknowledging that he loves you, that he's your father in heaven. And then if you have that assurance, you can pray in faith. So how do you pray the Lord's Prayer? Well, we pray the Lord's Prayer when we pray its themes and have its priority. Then you're praying the Lord's Prayer. We'll get into that in more depth, but there's a third reason. First of all, we need the Lord's Prayer, and then it's a commanded prayer model, but thirdly, the Lord's Prayer is a complete prayer model. You know, somebody once said that humility comes through humiliation, and it took me about 19 years to finally be crushed enough in my own efforts to just be humble enough to listen to the teacher and just to do what he said. And when I did, I found that very quickly. You know, I used to try to pray that hour. And if you're like me, every once in a while, you look at your watch and go, 20 more minutes. (laughs) You, You know what happened once I figured out how to pray the Lord's Prayer? I looked at my watch and I said, oh my goodness, I'm half an hour longer than I meant to be and I need to get to my sermon preparation. It just worked. It just changed. It's a complete model of prayer. And so I found out that the Lord's Prayer was given to average people like you and me 
to bring us above average in our enjoyment of praying. You know, I was saying to your elders that um, my, I, I was thinking of a time when my wife and I, we went to this beautiful restaurant in uh, a lodge, and uh, it was a courtyard. All the rooms went around this courtyard, and it had all these tropical bushes and a glass roof and a stream, actually, that ran through there, and we ordered steak and whatever else my wife had, and, um, and I said to them, you know what? We sat there, and I never once looked at my watch going, when is this going to be over? <laughs> That's what prayer should be like. If you can enjoy another human being so that you don't want it to end, that's what it should be like with God. You can enjoy the presence of God. And that's what the Lord's Prayer helped me to do. You know, sometimes I go to bed at night, I can't wait for the morning because that's when I'm going to have my time with God. I'm just, I go to bed looking forward to it. All right, I also found out that the Lord's Prayer is complete because anything you might want to pray about, just think about anything that you might want to pray about, you can bring it into the Lord's Prayer. So just for example, let's say you're a young person and you would really like to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You, you know, someday you want to get married. Where does that fit in the Lord's Prayer? Well, you come to God with this in your mind and you begin our Father. You go, Father, you love me so much you know all the things that are important to me. You know the desires of my heart. And one of my desires is to have a girlfriend. And you care about me. So you know, I know that if that's good for me, you're going to do it. Because a good father will do good things for their children. I'm so glad for that. And I'm not very good looking, you know. But you're in heaven. You're all powerful. <laughs> you can bring someone into my life who is crazy about me. By the way, he did that with me. So, uh, anyway, that you can bring anything into the Lord's Prayer. It's complete. It's a complete prayer model. Or what if, you know, maybe there's somebody here and there, you've had a huge injustice. You've been deeply, deeply wrong. And you're feeling very hurt because we have this instinct that an injustice needs to be punished or the world isn't right and wrongs need to be made right and this person has hurt you and you there's a part of you that wants to seek justice you know there, there's a part of you that wants to make that wrong right and you're tempted to tell everybody what a rotten person this other person is but then you come to in heaven, and you say to God, God, I know one of your per perfections is that you are utterly just. In fact, if you allow one injustice to go unpunished, you are less than perfect. So I know you will bring about justice. And you are perfectly righteous. I know that if you allowed even one wrong to go unrighted, you would be less than perfect, so you will right that wrong. Oh, that gives me comfort. I don't have to do this. You can do it. Do you see? Anything in your life can come into the Lord's prayer. Well, this is what I would conclude. It's safe to conclude that if God should gather up all the prayers you ever pray in life, they will only be whole, or that life of prayer will only be whole and complete to the degree it reflects the themes of the Lord's Prayer and the priorities of the Lord's Prayer. What comes first when you pray? <laughs> All right, now how can we live the Lord's Prayer? How can we actually put this into practice? Because maybe you're sitting there, you're going... Yeah, you know, I think I will. I think I'm going to try praying the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to, I don't know, maybe you're feeling really zealous and you're going, I'm going to pray for an hour every day for the rest of my life. You know? I remember a fellow uh, in our last church, his name was Brad, and 
Every day after work, he would stop at the gym and he would do weights for about an hour and then he'd go home to his wife and kids. And one day I said to him, it was March, and I said to him, hey, Brad, how's it going? And he said, oh, great, I have my gym back. And I said, oh, what do you mean? And he said, oh, every January we get a flood of people coming into the gym. That year they're going to get in shape. But every March they've given up and I get my gym back. <laughs> so <laughs> good intentions won't do it alone. You have to make some plans. And so I would suggest a few things for you, okay? I think you need to pick a time of day. Don't, don't commit to an hour. Let God sort of lead you into how long you should pray. But um, just pick the best time of the day. Think about it and go, what is the best time for me to pray? Like for me, it's first thing in the morning even before I have my shower, with a coffee. That's the best time. And, uh, but what's your best time? Like if you have small children, it might be when the children are napping because it's just crazy. They're up at 6 and they don't go to bed till 10, the last one, you know. And so what is your best time? Give your best time to God. Just even if you say, you know, at the very least I'm going to do five minutes. I, I think you won't be able to stop there, but um, start with that. And then pick the best place. Where is the place where I am going to be least distracted? By the way, turn your phone off, or if you think of any errands or things you have to get done, write them on a piece of paper and then flip it over. So you can just forget it and you know you can get back to it. But where is the best place for you to pray? Because we're creatures of habit, and if we go to the same place at the same time, all the time, it just makes it routine. And then I want to suggest something that really helped me, and uh, it probably helps about half the people I talk to, but not everyone, and that is I write out my prayers. Because when I'm praying, um, all of a sudden I'm daydreaming, and I, I, all, I wake up and I, oh, it's, I've been 10 minutes, you know, thinking about how I'm going to fix the garden and, you know, build something, you know, and so, but I find that if I just write out, you know, our Father, and then, and then I fill out that paragraph, I let my heart talk about God being my father and what that means to me. And then in heaven, and so I have about 25 or so of these filled up over the last 25 years. And I, I put the date at the top, and then I start praying. So, and in fact, um, I have to discipline myself because I'll spend my whole prayer time just on the first two phrases of the Lord's Prayer because they're so rich, they're so good. So, um, Try a pencil crutch if you're praying impaired. And then um, uh, let a crisis. Here's, here's something that's really good. We all go through crises. We all have things we worry about, things that make us sad, things that make us feel like a complete failure in life, things that we're afraid of in the future. God means for those to leverage you into prayer. And so when you're feeling overwhelmed by life, take that as a call to pray. Then you go, okay, I'm going to talk to God. This is a great time because I am really focused when I'm in trouble. Like that nothing focuses my mind on God more than when I'm afraid or when I'm hurting. Then that's just helping me pray. So take that as your leverage for prayer. Sometimes I go to bed at night, and the reason I can't wait to get up is because I'm going to tell God all about my problems as I go through the Lord's Prayer. So I hope, I hope as we go through the Lord's Prayer, you'll find it just really transforms your prayer life. And uh, maybe I can tell you uh, some of the answers to prayer that I've had over the years, but I'll make a comment on that whole aspect of prayer too when I do that. So um, I hope that you'll pray. I hope you'll learn to enjoy God's company the way you'd enjoy your girlfriend's company. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you so much that you love us so much that you communicate to us. You speak to us. You gave us your word. You've put your spirit within those who believe in you. And that opens our ears to you. And we want you. We want you to speak into our lives because we're born of the spirit. We're hungry for truth and righteousness. We thank you that you love us that much. And we thank you that you give us... Um, opportunity to teach or be taught what your word says you raise up people to do that you put them in front of us so that we will focus on a particular truth 
And so, Father, we know that in your love, you have focused us on the Lord's Prayer this morning. Help us to listen to that um, by your power and grace. You're in heaven. We need heaven's help for this. And we want our prayer lives to bring honor and glory to you, that you be hallowed, that in our prayer times we admire you. Hallowed be your name. And because we pray, you would be honored before others. So we commit these things to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, one is if you do have offering, there's an opportunity here at the front that you can leave it uh, for the church uh, use and for the Lord's ministry. And I also just want to encourage you once again to make sure you do sign up uh, as early in the week as you can, can for your plans during the week, just so that we know who's who's coming, uh, to which services in the planning can be done. And uh, we look forward to having Dave with us next week again. And um, I think we'll be getting into Our Father. Because I don't think he's going to start at the end of the prayer after that message. (laughs) He's going to start at the beginning. Let me pray. Father, thank you for the blessings of today. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your love. Thank you for being the God who provides, whether it's material things, Father, which we so often focus on, or whether it's those spiritual, emotional, and mental needs that we have. You are a gracious God and a loving God, and Father, we just commit ourselves to you as we go from this place this morning. And Father, we thank you for your blessing and your hand upon us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.